and welcome to Team Talk. We're in the middle of a busy spell for Lincoln City in the last week. The Imps beat Newport County, drew with Swindon Town and love it or loathe it, there was transfer deadline day as well. And there's more to come with Chelsea's under-21 to the visitors at Sinsel Bank tomorrow night for the semi-finals of the Checker Trade Trophy. And then there's a trip to Cambridge for City in the league on Friday evening. So joining me, James Williams, to discuss all of that is BBC Radio Lincolnshire's Rob Makepeace and the man behind the Stacey West blog making his first Team Talk appearance, Gary Hutchinson. Well, chaps, where to start? A busy week. How do you reflect on the last week on the pitch with the win against Newport and the draw against Swindon? Gary, we'll start with you. I think it's been a positive week. I think ahead of the two games, I think if somebody had said that you could have four points from the two games, I think we would probably have taken it. After 17 minutes of the Swindon game, I think it, it probably looked like the very least that we, we could expect. But overall, we haven't got beat. We've played two of our, our playoff rivals, so I think there's plenty of positives to take. Rob, would you agree? Yeah, I think it's been a, a good week. Yes, the performance wasn't great on uh, Saturday, but you'd have taken a point against uh, Swindon and Newport. I thought Lincoln played really, really well. and um, It's important Lincoln have a great home record between now and the end of the season if they want to, to get promotion or get in the playoffs. And, and that's exactly what they've done, remaining unbeaten. And we saw real character from Lincoln, didn't we, on Saturday? They didn't play well but they managed to not lose the game, which is important. Yeah, absolutely. I think what we saw on Saturday was probably a return to the, the sort of character that we saw in the last six months of last season. We didn't know we were beaten. It was a poor performance. Um, Danny would probably agree that starting with the three in midfield didn't work, possibly after the sending off. Um, but I think even though it wasn't working, we kept getting balls in the box, we kept fighting, we kept biting in the tackle. And if you, you remain on point, then eventually you will get some sort of reward. And, and we saw that at the end. Right, well, let's hear Lincoln City manager Danny Cowley's thoughts on Saturday's draw. We thought we played with the intensity or the energy that we that we expect, and as a consequence, we didn't really get a platform in the game. Um, and when we did get control possession, we probably didn't execute technically as well as we would have liked. Um, we do well to go a goal in front because we're it's against the run of play for all of credit to Swindon, I thought they were excellent. There's a reason why they've, they've won 10 games on the road this year. They're a good team away from home. Um, and so we go a goal up and they get down to 10 men. And from there, you want to go on and you want to try, you, you obviously want to win the game. So it's definitely from that moment on three points drop or two points dropped. Um, the two really go poor goals from us. Terrible, terrible goals. and. You look at back in the history of football and it's hard to win games 3-2. Not many teams win games when, when you can see twice. So, so we have to look at that. So, chaps, the change of formation, Gary, you mentioned it a moment ago. It didn't seem to work. Was dropping Matt Reid the right decision by Danny Cowley, Rob? Um, it, it's, you don't want to criticise a manager, do you, because of what he's done so far. But I think looking back, you know, we've seen this before with Lincoln. Sometimes when they try and change formation and they've not change it week in, week out, it does uh, seem to to struggle that the, the, the players do in the first game they play it and uh, I think on, on Saturday it was probably you know up until the point of the sending off it was it was alright it was fine it was working and then all of a sudden you think well let's go for it let's put yeah. another striker on you know they put a centre off on took their striker off um, and we could have done with that extra man up front you know Matt Green did a fantastic job on his own up there but he needs Matt Reed, I think sometimes to let him do what Matt Green's good at in terms of making the runs in and behind the defence, getting onto the, the, the flick-ons and getting onto the long balls down the channels and having Reed in the box to, to pass it to or cross it to. Um, and that's where Lincoln lacks something, I think, on Saturday. Yeah, because Reed and Green have formed a great partnership in the last few weeks and both are bang in form. It, it may be a, a bit of a difficult decision for Danny Cowley to take Reed out because he had mentioned how good Swindon were away from home. Do you think he changed the formation to try and counter the fact Swindon were so good away from home. Yeah, I think he changed it to try and counter the fact that they play three centre backs. Um, part of what we do to Matt Reed is we play the diagonal ball into him. Now, what, if there's two centre backs, he's got one centre back backing into him, and he's got one full back coming onto him. And a full back is either then pulled out of the way for a winger to come in, so it creates space. Um, against three at the back, I think it's two centre backs and the wing backs still picking up the space. So in actual fact, you're completely nullifying Matt Reed's. Um, threat from the diagonal ball and I think Danny had seen that I think he thought if we could flood the midfield with the three players try and get the ball on the floor then we can find a route out from there and try and occupy them in the middle of the park until the penalty like Rob said I think it worked Right well let's hear Danny Cowley's thoughts on the formation and how that worked on Saturday We haven't done particularly well against a three a uh, three five two um, and that's been since I've been here really so we've struggled if you look back through the through our results since I've been here, we've we've struggled against against back threes. 
Um, on Tuesday night when they went to back three, we, we struggled. Um, and we wanted to try to, to give ourselves a different option. And as well as that, we've got five games in 15 days or six games in 19 days. And the big man, as much as we love him, he can't plan them all because we'll, we'll break him. And I've got about five that can't plan them all. And I'm like you, you guys and our supporters, I want our best players to be playing every minute of every game. But I have to be really disciplined with my team selection and accept the criticism when it comes because I know that I've got to protect the players because otherwise I'll injure them. It's a busy period for Lincoln City in the next week or so, so I suppose the fact Reed didn't play all of Saturday's match is a positive that he will have the energy and the legs for the match against Chelsea tomorrow and Cambridge on Friday. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think we know Matt Reed will, will struggle to play three games in a week. That's nothing against him. It's just because of what his body goes through in a game. It takes a, a real battering during a game. Um, and I think we'll see Matt Reed um, real battering Chelsea's defenders tomorrow night, hopefully. Um, and it's important, I think, against Cambridge on Friday when they play at Central Bank, they're a physical side. Um, and I think it's important to have Matt Reed there. So that is a, a positive, I think. But at the same time, I think we're going to see quite a few changes from Lincoln in, in the game tomorrow and in the game on Friday as well, with Lincoln having such a big squad and a number of players to choose from. Let's go from the top end of the pitch to the back and, uh, and Paul Farman, a great servant for Lincoln City. But two errors on Saturday. Let's say it how it is. One error on Saturday. In my is that, opinion. Is that your opinion? In my opinion, one error on Saturday. I thought, um, OK, he might have done a little bit better with the first goal, but at the end of the day, there's a, he's seen a shot late, it's looped over, it shouldn't have come in. Um, as a goalkeeper, if you can't push it over, you're told to parry it away. Um, he's parried it back into his area, OK, but he's parried it to one side in his area, he hasn't parried it into the danger area. And then there's two defenders stood as their centre forward comes through. For me, I think the first goal was... 15% him, nothing more. Rob, would you agree? Yeah, I think that you know the, the second goal he should do a hell of a lot better with, and there's no doubt in that. Um, the first goal, I think some people will say he should have done uh, better with. I take Gary's point, but I think um, you know we saw it again on Newport on Tuesday where there was a similar situation. Um, I know he had his view blocked there a little bit more, but um, it was a difficult situation. I think you know there's been a lot of criticism of Paul Farman over the weekend and it's understandable but these calls of oh he should that should be his last game for the club he should be dropped we've had enough of, of Paul Farman are, are ridiculous in my opinion because if it was uh, James Wilson who had made that mistake say it was a back pass that was too short and the striker got in and scored would everybody be calling for James Wilson never to play for Lincoln again no they wouldn't it's it's I think you know keepers are going to make mistakes and and keepers mistakes are going to be in in a lot of people's minds uh, rather than a defender making a mistake or a midfielder making a mistake. At the end of the day, Matt Green went on that run of not scoring goals and everybody was very critical, but they wasn't saying, oh, we should get rid of him or anything like that. Look what he's come back and done now. I think the same will be of, of Paul Farman. It's a risky uh, strategy to play Ryan Allsop. We don't know what he's like. We've never seen him play. Uh, Josh Vickers, you know, I think could have would have come in probably for, t for tomorrow night against Chelsea, but obviously he's out for near enough the season. So... Um, Paul's going to be hurting, and I think the criticism he'll be getting on social media, you know, will affect his confidence. He, he's that kind of player. He, he loves the club. He loves the city. He takes it all to heart. You know, he's a, a really nice guy off the pitch as well, and, and he believes uh, in the in the bond between the club and the fans. And I think it'll hurt what happened to him on Saturday. Yeah, this is the thing, Gary. A goalkeeper can make errors, and they're certainly under the spotlight when they do, because it often leads to a goal. But it doesn't make him a bad goalkeeper. He's been a great goalkeeper for Lincoln City, and the criticism. Is a bit harsh, isn't it? It is harsh. Look, nobody's um, immune from criticism, and I think being a great goalkeeper doesn't make you um, a, a above the speculation and, and above criticism, not at all. Um, when a goalkeeper makes a great save, it can be as valuable as a goal and quite often isn't seen that way. Peter Brewery made a great save just before they scored their first goal. Um, double against Accrington, wouldn't be even playing Chelsea tomorrow. Notts County, great save from John Stead right before half-time. People forget those. Um, yes, if you make errors, it is under the spotlight a little bit more. I think fans are very, very keen to find a scapegoat quite often. And I think at the moment, if something do if you're doing really well and something doesn't go right, the fans need somebody to blame. And at Lincoln City at the moment, they won't blame Danny Cowley. Danny Cowley is relatively immune from criticism, and rightly so. So they're looking for somebody else. Paul Farman's in the firing line. OK, let's talk about the centre-half pairing then, because you could argue as well that the defending leading up to Swindon's goals wasn't great either, Rob. No, um, defenders should react. Um, defenders should be closing the ball down. There's no doubt in that. Um, and it was obviously Waterfall and, and Wilson. Um, we've seen Boswick play in there. And I know Danny Cowley thinks very highly of Michael Boswick as a centre-half. And obviously played in front of the back four. And I think 
Uh, Michael Bossett looked a little lost on Saturday. He was just in front of the back four. He, he wasn't in that two central midfield pairing that he usually likes uh, until uh, until the second half. And um, obviously, he's been playing very well at, at centre half. And James Wilson's going to be a fantastic player. We know what a good player Luke Waterfall is. But for me, I think we've seen a lot of changes with Lincoln, and, and it's, going to, it's going to take time for partnerships to build once again. We've had a, a, a relatively steady back four this season. We're starting to see a few changes at centre-half. That's going to take time uh, to get that bond that Luke Waterfall and Sean Raggett did. You know, when they first came together, the first month of the season, uh, last season in, in the National League, you know, they looked quite shaky, Waterfall and, uh, and, and Raggett, and then all of a sudden it came together and, and obviously we've seen what happened from then on. It may be one win in the last five in the league, Gary, but the Imps are still only two points off the playoffs. They're well placed going into the final few months of the season. Absolutely. Uh, you can make stats say whatever you want. We've lost one in 15 games. So uh, you can look at the numbers and, and, and turn them any way you want to. In those games in the league, we've played Luton, we've played Notts County, we've played Newport, we've played Swindon. They're all up there. They're, you know, We've got quite a lot of tough games out of the way. I think we've come through it in good in good stead. I think we're just tucked in now, ready for a playoff assault. Um, we never really experienced true bad form. We don't lose three or four and drew three or four or go six without winning. I think that's Danny Cowley's mentality. I think it's the team's mentality. Um, it's going to be an exciting second half of the season. Let's turn our attention to tomorrow night then. Chelsea's under 21s come to Sinsel Bank in the Checker Trade Trophy. Uh, I wouldn't have thought I'd be saying this about Chelsea's under 21s, but it's a massive match, Rob. Yeah, it is. It's huge. Um, it's huge for football, I think, overall. Um, we've spoke a lot on this programme and, and in the press conferences about boycotts, and I think we should go past that now, but it is about the competition and, and the Football League will be looking at tomorrow night's match, and I think they'll be quite nervous, actually, because uh, if, if Chelsea under-21s win and get to the final, there will be so much criticism heading the Football League's way because of and you know, and 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 I think it's understandable and 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 rightly so if it does uh, go that way for Lincoln City, first chance to appear at Wembley. That's all the motivation uh, anybody needs for tomorrow night. It would be a huge achievement for Lincoln to get to Wembley. You know, they've and let's be honest, the Czech Trade Trophy games have probably been some of the best games we have seen this season in terms of, of full-on entertainment and action and, and goals um, and hopefully more of the same tomorrow night. It was a great night under the lights against Peterborough a couple of weeks ago in the quarterfinals. It could be another special occasion tomorrow night, Gary, especially if Sinsel Bank is full, which it looks like it could be. Yeah, I think it's nailed on special occasion. When you was one game from Wembley and you've never been, I, I don't think it can fail to be. And I think that is probably one of the main things that goes in Lincoln City's favour tomorrow. Um, as, as Rob alluded to there, uh, the FA will not want Chelsea to win this game, in my opinion. Um, it is real football versus the pampered Premier League tomorrow. <laughs> the, the, there isn't, I don't think there's a football team in the land outside of the top flight that don't want Lincoln City to win. Um, if we win the game, it'll be fantastic. It's going to be very, very sore if we've lost come 10 o'clock tomorrow night. And the pitch cut up quite badly on Saturday. The weather conditions weren't great. That could work in Lincoln's favour tomorrow night. It could, though. I think Chelsea play at Aldershot, I think, possibly. And Aldershot's pitch isn't going to be the greatest, is it? You know, it's a National League pitch. So um, it will play a part. Um, I think Chelsea's lineup will be interesting. Obviously, they play tonight in the Premier League. Whether there's a couple of those players who don't play in the Premier League tonight, whether they'll get a game tomorrow. We've seen it with Batshuayi uh, in a previous round. So... It's going to be a difficult game no matter what. Technically, it's going to be difficult. Lincoln are on a run of, of game after game after game. That's going to play a part. That will play a part in the team selection tomorrow, uh, I'm sure. But uh, if Lincoln can use that physical strength that a lot of managers talk about and play direct and long balls and all this, if they can do that against Chelsea, then I think they'll be all right. And then a quick turnaround for Friday evening in Cambridge, Gary. Yeah, very quick turnaround, another crucial game. Um, as soon as you get one crucial game out of the way, another one comes along. Cambridge are a good side um, in the league at the moment. I know they're not they're not performing particularly well. A little bit of turmoil, I think, with, with Sean Derry and the ownership. Um, they're ripe for Lincoln City to go there, get back to winning ways in the league, um, do that. Then we've obviously taken seven points from nine and, and you're back on sort of playoff form. Right, chaps, thank you very much for joining me. That's all we've got time for on this week's show. It promises to be an exciting and possibly very important week in Lincoln City season. Enjoy. Goodbye.